<laughs> Sorry. Because I heard what song was on. This is like Phil Collins. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> and I'm also... Uh, I'm not quite sure what to think of my look that's going on right now. I'm so ready to change my hair. I'm so over these blonde streaks. So I guess I'm looking critically at myself right now. Um, which is not nice. I'm talking about positive. But uh, I guess it's also... It's been so long since I have been vlogging. I'll tell you about the Phil Collins song in a minute trying to keep my points in a stream of consciousness. Um, but it's been so long since I've vlogged regular. It's very strange for me to look in my uh, reflection here, if you can see. I see myself as I'm shooting, okay? That's one of the main reasons I haven't been using that Samsung thing yet, um, because it doesn't have the ability to let me see myself. So I, in the Samsung thing, unless I figure it out, I know I can. Who knows, I could be shooting a video where I'd be like this the whole time. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Which maybe for some of you would be better. Um, but I also, number one, I'm just really sick of the hair thing and I know what I'm going for. I'm gonna change it back to my more natural, darker color. And number two, a lot of the last videos that I did, I had not had any color in my face, in my body. And so it's um, a little, uh, it's just, weird when I turn this on and I'm like, wow, there's a lot of tan and blonde streaks going on there. And I know you're probably going, don't you have a mirror? Yes, I do. I don't know why it's different to see myself here. Probably too, because I have makeup on today. I decided to go and put makeup on. Um, it's New Year's Eve, so um, there you go. Cheers, last day of 2013. Oh shoot, I also realized that when I was in the other room, to just respond to a little text here. Um, so do you hear what song is on Phil Collins in the air tonight, which is like ages old. And it just reminded me that when I was in high school, I'm old people, remember. When I was in high school, there was this guy I liked named Craig. And he, <laughs> there was this rumor that went around about this song. It's kind of like these things that just take off and you don't know where who started it or whatever. There was this whole thing, and everybody would tell the story about this song, that it was about a murder. <laughs> so I remember I was, this guy had driven me home, we were sitting in the car. Never ended up actually kissing this guy. Um, but he was telling me the story of this song, and I was like, right, so you could kiss me or something now, instead of telling me a story about Phil Collins and a murder, but... <laughs> anyway. So, happy... I know it's New Year's Eve, but I don't know what day it is. As usual, hold on, Tuesday, it's Tuesday, so happy Tuesday. Um, anyway, I wanted to, today's topic, I'm actually gonna have today's topic. Um, I was going and responding to some of the comments on my blog, and I have to just give myself a pat on the back. For A, I said I'm back at it, and I'm actually back at it. Really the months of, as you know, October, November and then most of the early part of December. I've just been off my game with so much, but I've taken that time to do a lot of reading, figuring some stuff out. Around my house, I've been doing a lot of cleaning, giving stuff away, you know, kind of getting ready to pare, pare down, you know, all of the, I don't want to say junk, I just, you know, I had boxes and boxes of stuff stuff that I'm not using anymore and I'm like, hey, if I'm gonna be moving to Miami end of next year, I told my mom the other day, I said, do you know what I would do in a heartbeat? I would literally leave everything that I've had here and just start fresh. That would be an awesome thing to do because I found that in the past I've been so attached to certain things and so sentimental and yet while I can still be sentimental, I'm just less attached to certain things. They don't have the meaning behind them that they used to. And furthermore, everything is replaceable. What's not replaceable are people and experiences and so on. It was deep, wasn't it? You might want to have a sip of coffee when you're thinking about that. Anyway, so um, I've been kind of going through and, um, you know, one of the things I'm realizing about myself is um, when I buy things, I, I would buy things like lotions and candles. I really don't know what the meaning is behind this. Oh, it's a burpee song. Um, 
we say that on purpose, by the way. If you watch, if you read that website, um, the superficial, I always call her Bertney. Anyway, um, I've had a tendency to buy things and then I don't use them. I would buy candles and not, I, would, I don't want to burn them because then it'll run out. And that's just like thinking of things from a scarcity mindset versus knowing that, hey, I bought these to burn them. And, you know, this is what I'm talking about, guys. I talked about this on my blog. That's really loud, isn't it? I should turn it down a little bit. Uh, when I talked on my blog about, which those of you that just follow me here on my um at Facebook page, YouTube, you you can get more of me in the written form on my blog, kellyolexa.com, but I was talking about working backwards, how so much with me that's, that's working for me and helping me have success, even when I fall off the wagon or whatever, is to work backwards, and this goes in both ways, so I'm going to do videos about this, um, hitting both sides of it. You can work backwards in looking at your life and situations or circumstances or results that you have and you can work backwards and go, okay, why haven't I been able to lose weight in the past? Why haven't I been able to save money in the past? Why haven't I been able to have success at work in the past? You know, you know, and, and you work back and evaluate, you know, what is it, if, if, let's just say weight loss, right? You know, when I told you guys I went through this whole perimenopause situation, which this is Suzanne's new book, can you see that? I'll put links to all the stuff down in the. I'm going to be much more proactive about adding links down in my YouTube channel. Comments. No, not the comments, the information. Um, when my body started changing at age 40, um, you know, I basically kind of spent two years um, freaking out, but, but not, you know, I kind of stopped everything. I stopped. I thought I was still working out. I thought I was still eating right, but a lot of the time I was stressed out and had this horrible skin condition that was on my arms and my chest and my neck and my back. For those of you that have heard this from me before, sorry, but I say this for people that might just start start be starting to watch my videos so that they can learn what I'm talking about and what maybe some of the signs were. So this horrible skin condition and I tended to just kind of go into my cave and I, I hid. I didn't want anybody to see me. I didn't want anybody to see my skin or, or um, you know, that I gained weight. And so that made it worse because then my stress went way up and then the condition got worse because of stressing out about it, right? And also because I didn't have um, the right medicine that I use now, which is a balances my hormones. But, um, you know, I, I back then wasn't figuring stuff out. And I was certainly going to a doctor that wasn't treating me effectively. But back then, when I had gained weight and I finally was like, okay, now I'm ready to work out, now I'm ready to train, I had gained so much weight. And I, I'm so glad that I took pictures back then because now when I do reach my final goal, you know, I, I, it'll be nice for me to be able to share with women that have gained weight for whatever reason, and really this can go for men too, but just to be able to show, like, look, I was at that point. Here's here's the here's the way I gained weight. I mean, it's not something I'm happy about, but you know, I look at myself in those pictures, and I could see the way I gained weight, where I gained it. It was different than where I'd ever gained weight before. It's all around the middle. I'd heard about this from people my whole life. I had heard about that when you get older, whether you're a man or a woman, all of the weight you gain will be around your core. But I always was like, oh, you know, I don't gain weight there. And I didn't. I would always have a flat stomach no matter what. I just tended to get bigger boobs. I didn't see it at the time, but I would, you know, gain weight in my arms and my back. I would get more curvy. So I'd get, you know, a bigger booty. I'd get bigger thighs. Uh, but I always had a flat stomach. And because I had, like, the boobs and the butt, I kind of got away with it when I was younger for a long time and, and it was easy to overlook. Now that I'm in a more health-minded lifestyle, it's easier for me to see because I'm looking at my body in a different way. I'm looking at my body not just superficially for what size I want to be. I'm more looking at my body as, you know, I don't, I, I want it to look a certain way. I want it to function a certain way. When you have extra fat and when you are not at your ideal weight, um, you're not at your healthiest, period. And I'm also looking for how I can function and, and what all the strength training I'm doing is doing for me on the outside, for how I look. I have no problem saying that. But also for how um, I'm getting healthier and, and, and 
more able to approach this phase of my life. I mean, heck, I'm 44. I feel damn great about how I'm looking at the moment, even with this Achilles injury that has set me back a little bit. But it's all about, I've said this a lot this year, but I'm gonna harp on it a little bit more because so many of you write comments on my blogs. You leave me comments here, you write me emails, and you're like, gosh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm so embarrassed. I, you know, this happened or I've never been able to do it and you make me think like I could do it. And here's the thing, you guys, I still haven't reached my goal. You know, I really got set off track or set taken aback, however you want to look at it, with this Achilles injury starting, it was basically, what, end of September? Let's say end of September and then October, November. And it was finally, you know, in December that when I was back here, I've been able to really start um, making my rebound, if, if that. But without question, you know, I told Mark this, and I was really frustrated, I was telling my friends this, really frustrating to get down to Florida in early November and put my workout clothes on and be able to see it and feel it, that there was extra fat there and it was such a letdown. But here's the thing, the difference is the very fact that I'm telling you guys this and the fact that I can kind of be a little bit more calm and just say, well, yeah, I gained weight, whatever, now I'm on a plan and I'm going to not only take how far I've come this year, and, and build on it, but I'm gonna, without question, reach my goal. I know it, you know, without question. I'm not worried about the Achilles situation. I've learned, I've, I've learned the past few months. Um, I've done a lot of reading on it, as far as preventative measures, as far as rehab, as far as what I need to be doing every day. Um, it's, it's not something that can, you know, wipe you out. What I do wanna prevent is having, you know, your Achilles pop and then you have to have surgery and so on. But when I talk about what I probably said 25 minutes ago, working backwards, if you have a result in your life that you don't like, work backwards, be harsh with yourself, figure out what you haven't done. Back to when I said the whole perimenopause thing, I remember saying to my friends, I remember very explicitly going, I have done everything. Okay, this is in quotes. I've done everything. Clearly, I'm the only one that can't lose weight. Everybody else can lose weight because my friend Sherry, she'd had a baby and she would write me and, you know, it felt like in two days she'd said, I, I lost 15 pounds. My friend Jessica, she'd had a baby. So all these people with hormones, right? Because I would look at women that had a baby as, you know, hormonal ups and downs. And I said, I've done everything. I'm not losing weight. When I was really honest with myself and I really started to look backwards, it was actually my mom. I've shared this with you guys I think a couple years ago that was like the wake-up call because my mom goes and I don't think she was trying to be a douchebag but she was like are you, maybe she just sensed my frustration and maybe could see what I wasn't seeing she said are you doing everything that you used to do the exact same amount the exact and I was like of course I am I'm eating chicken breasts I'm eating this blah, blah, blah. and then I got home that night and I was like and then I started to go back in my calendar and think about this week when I traveled and this week when I was home and this week. And I started to look and I was like, oh, yeah, I did pack my Val slides and my resistance bands and my workout DVDs. But guess what? When I was in Atlanta, that first night I didn't do that. And this is what I didn't do the second night. And then I did 20 minutes of cardio, but that isn't, you know, and then I started to like uncover this box of here's why and you might think why would I want to do that then I'm gonna find out I'm gonna feel bad about myself no you won't okay I think too many of us and a couple of you left a comment on my blog just today about this you the more that you can become comfortable with I guess sharing the bad news about yourself the more that you can become comfortable about getting real with yourself and getting real with other people I've been there people I've been at that phase where you know, when I first hired my, my trainer, Jay, I didn't want to go to see him and get weighed. I didn't want to have my fat tested. I, it's kind of like when you're bad with money and, and I've been there, I'm certainly not great with money. And you don't want to check your, you don't want to balance your checkbook because you just are like, I just don't want to see it. I, wanna, I don't want to deal with it. I don't know what I did. And it's the same way with weight gain, right? How many people do you know? Everybody says the same thing. Oh, I'm sure I need to lose five or 10 pounds. Nobody tends to say, 
I really need to lose 50 pounds. They don't tend to say that. Most people go, yeah, I want to lose like 10 pounds because nobody wants to say the bigger numbers, okay? Let's get real, people. I lost 20 pounds this year and let's get real. I probably have at least another 20 to lose. Now, who knows, okay? We all know that muscle weighs more than fat and, and there does come a, a point, remember when I was, um, I, I told you in one of my last videos before I went to Florida, my weight had gone up but my measurements have gone down. Totally fine with that. When I say I probably have to lose 20 pounds, I'm just saying, I'm being real here, okay? A lot of people look at me when they meet me and they're like, oh no, you look great. Why do you think you have to lose weight? I don't think I, I would make somebody rubberneck and go, oh crap, girl. <laughs> but let's be real. If you, if you take your hand and, and grab, there's plenty of places on my body that you're like, I can pinch an inch, girl. Now, there's, that means fat that's left over. When I put on my um, tank top, which is under here, okay, and when you have a very tight tank top that has a shelf bra and it pushes up, and I, I mean, I've had this all year, so this is not just a result of, of recently when I told you I gained some weight back. I've always had this fat over there. That's fat, people. I mean, I, call it what you want. It's not, it's not muscle. It's fat. It's extra fat. That's an area where I haven't leaned out enough, okay? So, it is what it is. The more you can get comfortable talking about yourself, not in a negative way, okay? There's a fine line between what I used to do, which was to get up every day, look in the mirror and go, you are disgusting. I mean, and I'm not even gonna get, it, get into the horrible self-talk. I got up every day looking for how bad I, I looked, looking for all the bumps on my skin. I berated myself, I cried, I got upset. I basically just fed physically and emotionally this this bad situation i i i then feel bad about myself so i'd go to burger king in secret because again it's when you're not being honest with people i'd go and i wouldn't tell anybody i was doing it and then i would you know cry to my friends oh i don't know what's wrong i'm just you know i'm still not i'm not able to do anything and i you know i just give up and maybe i would tell a few secret friends but publicly i certainly didn't want to put that on my blog because i couldn't let people know guess what the more that i'm honest now with you guys do you know how much it makes me feel better when someone will write to me and go, I finally, you know, thank you for saying that. I've been going through the same thing. And now I, we have a couple people that we've got this just very informal Facebook group going. And we've got people that have joined that, that you guys were watching me here and now you've joined. And, you know, Marsha, among other people, I can think off the top of my head, um, Paul, you know, you guys have joined us there and now you're doing things all the time and you're surprising yourself. Um, so. The more that we can be honest with ourselves, the more that we can kind of dive into. That's why I get excited because this, this social media space, and of course I'm doing a soft plug for Fitfluential, this community that we've created is good because it takes away that intimidation factor. It takes away, trust me, when you are honest and you share with people, God, you know, I did this and I, I've got 40 pounds to lose and I, you know, whatever. Let me tell you how many people will jump in and go, oh my God, I lost 75 pounds this year. Okay, you realize you're not the only one. When you realize you're not the only one, it makes you feel a lot better about asking for help. I think that what's been a problem in the past is, because this has been for myself, you know, you feel like you're, you, you're embarrassed about where you are. You think you're the only one, so you don't want to tell anybody and you hide out. And then you think, I can't go to the gym until I'm perfect. So you end up never going to the gym. You don't know what to do at home as far as eating or working out. So you don't do it. And then the problem just keeps going. Where really all it takes is making friends, giving yourself the right input, the right exposure to the right people that can educate you and inform you and be a guide for you. And then you start the thing, that ball moving in the right direction, right? I'm almost to 20 minutes. So I have to chill out and maybe shoot some other videos after my workout because I have to go meet uh, my friend, my new friend at the gym. Um, I just revived my Lifetime Fitness membership. I didn't know it needed to be reinstated, but apparently it had been canceled. Um, so I called them last night, we got that set up and I'm heading over there. And um, just working on a lot of stuff, but people, the best thing I can tell you is, excuse me, and you'll hear me say this a lot, um, the biggest change that I made was one, being ridiculously honest with myself. And when I say ridiculously honest, I am saying the furthest from beating yourself up. Being ridiculously honest means you go, there's a solution for every problem. If 
no one, there's probably a few rare exceptions. None of us, when I was saying that to myself about, oh, I must be the only one, you know, something's happened to my body and I'm the only one that can't lose weight. You know what, when I was saying that, and if you look back at my videos from, you know, you can, pr you can probably watch the change in me. You can see my face getting fuller. You could see, I don't say that to be morbid, it is what it is. I'm fine with it now, but it's kind of cool to see the progression and to see how far I've come this year and to know how far I'll go next year and so on and so forth. But that's because I finally asked for help. That's because I finally chilled out and I got on the scale and I'm like, hey, you know what? If, if what I need to lose is not five or seven pounds, like I never wanted to say 10 pounds. Guess what? Like I told you, I've already lost, where's my, I've already lost 20 pounds this year and I have a lot more to, to go. And I'm telling you guys that because you need to get over the fact that it's this horrible label to say, I have to lose this much weight. You have to have a goal to work for. If you say, oh, I need to lose five or 10 pounds, you're not really working towards anything. And I'm gonna talk about the goal part of stuff um, in my next video. I gotta go. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a happy new year and make sure that you don't drive. Use Uber, get a cab.